Play data, it is new product. I know, time. I'm getting all this. Okay. New product time. Space. Okay, ready to do this thing? Yes. All right, first up, goggles. The goggles. The okay. goggles, they do nothing no, other than make us happy. They are goggles. So these are yeah. um, goggles that are for costuming. And I'll show them sort of on my head here so you can see what they look like. Yeah. Okay, so, yes, these are basically costume goggles. Um, you can wear them over your eyes, but they're not, um, they're not like safety rated. So even though they have like a glass lens and stuff, I mean, I don't, I guess, you know, you could wear them for fun if you're like on a bicycle, but I wouldn't wear them as like safety goggles if you're like motorcycling or an aviator or something. Uh, and they have tinted lenses that you can see, and then I'll show on the overhead um, what's up with the tinted lenses. Because most goggles actually come with, well, they either come with really dark tinted lenses or they come with clear lenses. Um, so this comes with half tint lens, and I'll show you. So this is like, like a glowy LED ring. And then when you put it in, it diffuses it a little bit, um, but you can still see the LEDs. But like you can't see, for example, um, if I put a circuit board inside, whoa, uh-oh, hold on, let me plug in this power again, okay, back, all right, so if you, if you, you know, you, you can stick a, um, an LED ring or something in here. The NeoPixel ring fits perfectly in there. The NeoPixel ring fits perfectly, and then you can put a circuit board, and the circuit board does not appear, like, it's not that clear that there is something else in there. Yeah. And that's why we, we went with this sort of tinted thing, so you could shove batteries, trinkets, or gemmas. Um, and there's a bit of space in here for that. So you can like, you know, glue something here, for example, or there's enough space in here for a fairly big battery um, that you can plug in. So it's meant for a NeoPixel ring, so people wanted to build our goggle projects. Um, you can remove the lenses. Yeah. Hold on. Um, and there's the clear lens and there's the tinted lens. So if you want, you can cut out a new lens if you wanted to from like some laser plastic or, or just cut it by hand out of like some diffuser or a gel if you want to have a colored uh, lens instead of this sort of tinted or clear lens. Up to you, totally cool. Um, they're fully made out of plastic. Um, there's no foam. So if, if you want them to be a little more comfortable, you can either you can either cut the plastic or um, like put foam around them or something. They're pretty basic. They're just for costuming, but for a lot of people, you know, probably pretty good enough for making NeoPixel goggles. Okay. Next up, let's go to. Oh, you know, I had one image that I wanted to show. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is what you can do with them. Do 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 do. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Uh, we got a battery. Okay. Yeah. We can talk about this battery. Um, so we have more LiPo batteries. Um, the batteries are pretty basic. Uh, we've had a couple batteries in the store. We have uh, 2300 milliamp hour, 1200 milliamp hour, uh, 150 milliamp hour, which is a cute little square one, and then we added like 100 milliamp hour, which is a little rectangular one. Now we have 500, so that's right in the middle there. Um, so it's 500 milliamp hours at 3.7 volts. It's a LiPoly. It has our Nice JST connector. You can use it with our um, micro lipo or other lipo charger. Yeah. It kind of fits behind a Gemma nice, uh, not behind a Gemma, behind a Flora nicely. Yep. Um, the smaller one, the 150, fits behind a Gemma. This one is a little bit bigger, so it'll fit, you know, behind a Gemma or um, a NeoPixel ring. Uh, it's about like one and a half inches by one and a half inches by five millimeters. I was saying 500 milliamps is kind of like a nice yeah. intermediary. Um, value, so I like having it. It's got the protection circuit here. You can see this. Um, a little out of focus there. There we the, go. The yellow thing, the yellow tape hides a protection circuit. So yeah, these are these are good batteries. I like these. And um, yeah, yeah, these are fresh. The, these were just made. This was made um, October thirteenth. One of the things I like about fresh. our um, new slew of batteries is they're the best price right now, the best value, and the best quality. We spent forever on this. We finally so we've actually gone through like three different. Lipoly battery factories um, to find this one, and this one actually has been the best one so far. Um, the quality of the batteries are really good. The capacity is really good. Um, they're packaged really nicely, and uh, yeah, the price is nice because it's actually a direct factory. They actually make them there instead of like yeah. a factory that because we're we can we're now buying a thousand batteries at a time, so we can actually 
get them at like a reasonable rate because they, you know, these batteries shouldn't be more than ten bucks. Yeah. So this one I think is like eight dollars. Our, or something our, our scale good. because we're buying so many batteries means that we don't have to charge what everyone else charges. We can yeah. charge which we what we think is just a fair amount. So. Yeah. So it works great with all, almost everything. Yeah. It needs about three, four volts. Okay. Next up, what's this thing? Oh, that is a um, resistive touchscreen to USB adapter. We put in the resistive touchscreen to I squared C or SPI adapter. This one does USB or UART. Um, you can see there, touch. Um, and I'll show it on the overhead. So we don't have any resistive touchscreens in the store yet because I'm still working on that. Um, but this is what our resistive touchscreen looks like. Back up a little bit so you can see a little bit more. So resistive touchscreens, this is a seven inch touchscreen, which might be, whoa, hold on. Doesn't like it because it's clear. Come on. Focus. Focus, camera, focus. We're doing a show here. Oh no. Maybe it'll come to, into focus in a moment. Yeah. Usually what I found is when it goes out of focus, if you get closer. Yeah. It's also delayed, which makes it harder. See? What? Is, there's a delay. <laughs> so. Yeah. Look at that. Okay. Uh, all right, so now it's a little better. Okay, so um, that was kind of d delay fun. Uh, so the, the resistive touch screen. Oh, man. I'm going to focus again. Um, so the resistive touch screen is um, sort of a glass overlay that goes over a, a TFT or LCD display. I believe and then, it's time to punt on that. What? You giving up? Okay. I'm just gonna hold it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, because there's a delay. That's why. Yeah. So it's difficult to uh, get in focus. Um, so you can plug it into this connector here on the side. Um, this little four-pin connector. This part slides in, like so. And then the other end connects to USB, and it just shows up as a mouse, which is really nice because oftentimes um, you know, there's no way to connect this analog touchscreen to a computer. You need something to convert it from the analog, you know, resistive measurements yeah. to like mouse movement. So this is a chip from Microchip, the AR1100, uh, which is kind of, it's actually a PIC microcontroller that they reprogrammed, but you know what, like it's fine, I don't care. So it's, it's basically a PIC that's uh, been burned with uh, firmware specifically for um, reading resistive touch screens and then converting them to a USB mouse. And the nice thing about this shows up as a mouse is that it works with any operating system. So it works with Mac, Windows, Linux, work with the Raspberry Pi, work with the BeagleBone, work with anything that can basically use a mouse as an input. You can, tablets, I mean, they already yeah. have touch screens. Maybe you want another one, who knows? I don't know. Um, you know, microcomputers, anything. Um, and you don't need a special driver because they show up as a mouse. Uh, and then to calibrate it, it actually has calibration software. So. If you can connect the, the screen and the, and the mouse touch screen to a Windows computer, they have some Windows software that you can run. It's only on Windows, unfortunately. But you can calibrate the screen to the display that it's attached to, and then um, you save it in the EEPROM of, of the PIC microcontroller here, um, and that's what, um, it saves it permanently so that next time when you plug it into any other operating system, it will show up calibrated. So it's actually kind of like an interesting solution. There's other, like, you know, converters, but I found that they couldn't be calibrated or they needed special drivers or they were like something really weird about them. So this chip I really like because it's pretty easy to use. There's also a UART. It spits out data. I don't know. Like I didn't use it because this is, I'm using it mostly for USB. Um, but you know, if you want, there's like these pinouts here that you can use for kind of the UART. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Next up, uh, we got a book. So this is Maker Workbench. This is from Adam Kemp. He is one of the people who writes on our site. And uh, I had introduced him to um, O'Reilly, which is oh, uh, Maker Media now. And uh, he has a book with Make called The Maker Space Workbench. Tools, Technology, Techniques for Making. So um, check it out. It's a really good book. If you ever thought about having a maker space or um, collecting all the things you would need for a maker Yeah, this has like wearable stuff. Yeah. It has like Arduino stuff, of course. It has 3D printer stuff. It has um, laser cutting stuff. It's basically like all the tools that you see people using, you're like, damn, those are cool tools. Yeah. These, um, this just shows you how to do it. It shows you surface mount soldering, through hole soldering, how to order PCBs, screws, tapes, devices. Yep. 
drills, every kind of tool that you will get to. It's kind of like a nice little reference. And he's an actual real live school teacher who teaches kids, so you know he's battle tested. He All right, next teaches up. kids. We have the Big Shot camera. This is a camera for education. So this is for the people out there who want to build their own digital camera. Yeah. And uh, no soldering though. No soldering. No. Just pop so, it together. Yeah. It's a pop together kit. And uh, one of the things I wanted to do. Maybe is, we can just yeah, sort of fold it up. I was going to hold it up like this. So, yeah, because it's too big to show. Yeah, it's like it's like one of those 101 electronic kits, but it's, so, it's making your own digital. You camera. can see the lipo. It's just like their lipo. The yeah. case. Um, the lens assembly, the LCD, some screws. There's a hand crank. I guess you crank it to um, charge it. Um, an LED flash. That's what I thought was really cool. Um, springs, spacers. Yeah, there's a backup power dynamo. There's, yeah, so you can um, charge the LiPo battery yeah. via the Software hand crank. works on Windows and Mac. It can yeah. store 120 photos. It has a 1 watt LED. It has a 1.4 inch LCD. Yeah. It could do regular panorama and 3D. Um, photos and it has a three megapixel sensor, so yeah. that's uh, 2048 by 1536. So it's like a, it's you know it's not like a crazy Lumix whatever Panasonic camera, but it is it is you can build a, a fairly cool. usable digital camera and it's um it's a no solder kit, but it has a lot of mechanical parts. So if yeah. you want to take a break from soldering and put something together that's more mechanical. If you have a young person in your life, get this for them because is it like I want a digital camera? You're like well you'll have to build it. Because one of the cool things is they'll go and show their friends this cool camera that they made, and then they'll take photos, and then they'll post the photos, and they'll be like, that's the camera I made, and these are the photos I took. It just, it just changes the relationship to technology. Yeah. It's good. Okay. And then last but not least, this is my favorite new product. Rings. We're selling Stargates. That's right. Jack O'Neill's on the scene. Tilk's in there. Commander Carter's going to help you out. I don't even know what you're talking about. You're making no sense. Yeah, anyways, um, these are the 24 LED NeoPixels. These are awesome. We showed a video with these, and people freaked out. They're like, I want those now. So and we're like, we don't have them now, but yeah, we have them now. We have them now. OK, so here are the rings. OK, stay in focus. I like please. how the camera is totally OK with these LEDs tonight, but not like something that's uh, um, easy. Yeah, OK, so you've that. got, oh, yeah, these are nice. So you've got, um, these are the, the 24 LED ring. And next to it, I'm showing the 16 LED ring. Um, just because people are like, hey, what, how do they look in comparison? And then you can kind of see the 16 LED ring does fit in the 24. People, I don't know why they were asking that, but it does. Um, but basically just a NeoPixel ring other than that, 24 LEDs. Um, there's two power pins, two ground pins, uh, data in, data out. It's a ring. It's circular. Um, actually, you know what's interesting? That th this ring is actually big enough. You can see the measurements on the product page. Um, you could actually make a ring light out of it. Yeah. Because we did we did make a, a white ring light, but you can make a colored ring light, and it fits around most like digital camera lenses. So one too. Okay. Is that, look at that. Ooh, glowy. Okay. And Wait. then it shows that. Yeah, that's creepy. Yeah. So turn that off. And then I'll show that. Okay. There you go. Yeah, that's nice. That's right. nice. Okay. So yeah, nice, nice big rings. Okay. Guess what? What? That was new. That was a uh, new product. Okay, great. Okay. Oh, and here's a here's a. a Quick shot of the 12 LED, which is not out yet. Okay. Shh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was, it's not out yet, Dennis. Okay, that was new product. <laughs> Oof.